We're here at the Gunside Academy in the high desert in Arizona, where hopefully we're going to see a little sunlight in just a minute to talk about terminal ballistics, the way bullets perform in a semi-fluid medium. That would be us. And since we're short on volunteers, ballistic gelatin is just going to have to substitute. For a control, we're going to be using this round. This is 125 grain jacketed hollow point 357, maybe the most studied round in history. It's also one of the very first rounds that was purpose designed for law enforcement. It goes back to the 30s, the Depression and the motor bank bandits, Bonnie and Clyde, John Dillinger, Machine Gun Kelly, who would ride into town in their cars, hit a bank, and then shoot their way out. A lot of firepower, BARs, military rifles, and the then new Super 38, a 1911 and 38 Super. The only cartridge that could do a good job of punching through cars. Most of law enforcement at the time had 38 Special. This one's a full metal jacket. What you saw then was round nose lead. Elmer Keith, among others, said this round was a little anemic. Law enforcement wanted parity with the bandits. This round is anemic. In fact, it's still anemic. Let's take a look. You probably noticed that the 38 Special didn't bark even in this Ruger snub. Well, Elmer Keith's rounds did bark. And for the next 20, 30, 40 years, they became a standard round for law enforcement. Of course, law enforcement at that time was pretty committed to the revolver. But that's why we have so much data on the 125 grain jacketed hollow point. That's how it has such a reputation as a man stopper, because it's been shot a lot. And yes, Elmer Keith's bullets did bark. technology has continued to evolve. This is another 125 grain jacketed hollow point. It's a Hornady critical defense load. But take a look at the nose. There's a polymer plug in the nose. And this is one of the several solutions to solve the problem of what happens when a hollow point bullet punches through heavy material, a jacket, a vest, especially a leather jacket. Typically, what happens is that hollow point fills up. And as a consequence, when the bullet finally hits that semi-fluid medium, it doesn't expand the way it was designed to expand. Now, every manufacturer has different solutions for getting hollow points to expand, and they're pretty reliable. You'll see that this is still a relatively hot round, especially out of a snub. Most people don't carry rounds quite this hot in a snub, but watch this. With the Hornady Critical Defense ammo, a more modern bullet design, what you see here is a larger, wider wound cavity. And probably penetrated two, three inches a little bit deeper than just a regular 125 grain jacket and hollow point. With modern bullet design, you're getting a lot more tissue destruction, a little bit deeper penetration. We're here at Gunsight looking at issues of terminal ballistics using lots of ballistic gelatin. When we talk about a purpose design cartridge, maybe this is the ultimate purpose design cartridge, the 40 Smith & Wesson, a cartridge that was designed after the 1986 Miami FBI shootout disaster, where the Bureau decided they needed a more powerful cartridge for their agents. 10 millimeter was tried, it was deemed to be too powerful. So we ended up with what amounts to a 10 millimeter special, the 40 Smith & Wesson, 40 caliber bullet, a little bit shorter case than the 10 millimeter. 
This has become the most popular law enforcement and arguably the most popular self-defense cartridge in America. Let's take a look here at modern bullet development. These are Hornady tap rounds, a very, very effective self-defense and law enforcement round, a round that I've carried a lot of times. John Browning developed the 45 ACP cartridge at the same time as the 1911 pistol to fire that cartridge. And for decades, this 230 grain full metal jacket bullet was the standard for semi-auto stopping powder. John Browning's masterpiece has also benefited from modern bullet design. These are 165 grain Federal Hydra shocks. You'll notice it's a lighter bullet going faster. That's to aid in the expansion of the bullet. Look in the nose. You see a little lead dimple sticking out there, a little lead post. That's to also guarantee expansion. Here's how that works. Here's an interesting story. 9mm round is the most common round on Earth. It was developed in 1902 by George Luger for his justifiably famous pistol. And over the decades, it's been eclipsed by first the 45 ACP, then the 40 Smith & Wesson. But the 9mm has been making a fairly amazing comeback. That is partially due to modern bullet design, but it's also due to the rise of the smaller 9mm pistols. This is a Ruger LC9, one of the most popular pistols in the last year. Sometimes I carry this gun, and the ammunition that I carry in it is the Corbon DPX. DPX for deep penetrating. You may be familiar with Sarah Ahrens from one of those 